Can you see now my slides? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to share to you some of the uh, researches we had in Filmec and uh, potential appropriate post-production technologies and practices to reduce losses and maximize benefits for various stakeholders. So before I begin with the topic, let me first introduce to you our office. So this is the first time I will be joining this webinar. So it might, might as well introduce what is Filmec all about. Filmec is stands for the Philippine Center for Post-Service Development and Mechanization. And we are a regular research agency or bureau under the Department of Agriculture. So we are mandated to generate, extend, commercialize, and deploy appropriate and problem-oriented agriculture and fishery post-harvest and mechanization technologies. We have our mission and vision here the vision to be the premier center for post-service and mechanization development for a gender responsive, globally competitive, and food secure Philippines. Our mission is committed to modernize the agriculture and fishery sectors through increasing resource use efficiency and productivity, reducing losses and adding value to the produce through a partnership-based research and development, extension, commercialization, and deployment of appropriate post-harvest and mechanization technologies. So we have here the twin mandates of Filmec. Uh, we conduct research and development in these areas of concern. And then out of the research findings we have, we extend this to our targeted beneficiaries. And in the long run, the effect would be efficient resource use, food safety and quality preservation, reduction in post-harvest, value adding, so that we can be globally competitive and sustainable agri-fishery sector so that we can provide available and available food for the Filipinos as well as to other humankind. Okay, uh, Filmec has completed researches on assessing food losses and we had researches on cereal losses. We have established the post-production losses from harvesting, shelling, drying and milling. We all, uh, in the cereal losses, we have established the losses for paddy and rice and corn. I will not dwell much on discussing how did, uh, the each of the losses for we only have a uh, few, uh, few minutes for this session. Uh, we also have completed research, researches on assessing fruits, losses and waste like mango, Banana, the variety of Lakatan and Latundan, Banana Cardava, Calamansi. And we also have researches on losses for vegetables such as eggplant, cabbage, bulb onion, and carrots. We also have uh, other researches on root crops like cassava, sweet potato. We also have other uh, commodities aside from what I've just mentioned, you know. So uh, let me share with you how were we able to uh, determine these losses, no? What did we do so that uh, we can share it to you how we determine this post-production losses. So I will, since this uh, session is on the fruits and spices, I will share with you some of the results of the bulb onion and carrots, okay. Uh, we, identified first the value chain or supply chain of the commodity in, uh, in terms of the market and, market and handling routes. We identify the actors involved in each of the activities and we measured the losses during, using scientific pr procedure. And once we have established these figures of losses, that's the time we can have the potential interventions for each, uh, for each commodity. So take note that in every commodity, there is some uniqueness in handling the potential interventions to reduce these losses. Okay. So for example, the bulb onion from Bungabong Nevaisiha to Divisoria, we identified the handling routes. So Bungabong is famous for the red bulb onion. And from the farm, it's 
this, uh, the harvest is sent to the wholesaler traders assembly area for further sorting, packaging, and loading before it is placed in cold storage and marketed to the Visoria market. But in some, uh, some cases, the wholesaler traders directly sell after uh, packaging and loading, directly sell to these markets. So what are the post-production practices and operations that have undergone due to the red bulb onion? So under the farmer's level of activities, harvesting is done manually by uprooting the, the bulb of the onion and then pre-drying it while on field. Once uh, after harvesting all of it, they will clean and trim the onions and then uh, spread it again for curing the field before sucking it using red bags. And then the farmers, after sucking it, this uh, produce will then be uh, uh, sent to the wholesaler traders area for further cleaning, blowing, sorting, and then bagging so that it will be ready for the cold storage. And in this system, uh, the cold storage was uh, lasted for six to seven months. Uh, then after seven months, the bulb onion was further cleaned again before it was distributed to the retailer and wholesalers. Okay, after the practices, we identified what are the sources of the losses. Yeah. These are some of the losses that we got, we've got from the onions, you know? We have pencil-like, or we call it the lapis, rotten, oversized, immature, discolored twin or peeled bulb onions so these are the sources and types of onion losses no? okay after identifying those sources of losses we summarize it in each of the fact actor and activities so for example harvesting is done by the farmers and we found out that the losses is around almost 24 percent quality losses and physical is three percent so this is the losses are due to immature, peeled, and harvest, cut or discolored twin uh, onions. Okay, on the point of the trader level, further cleaning, we found out that there is a still added losses of 3.55% for the physical and 8.44% for the quality losses. And most of these uh, losses came from rotten, peeled, oversized. Then after storage for seven months, we found out that there's a weight loss almost of 24%. So summing it up, the losses obtained from bulb onion is almost 64% of the total harvest. You can imagine how large is this losses. Okay. So how That's did we address this waste in this um, example? So the rejects brought about by discolored and oversized irregular sheet onions, we found out that there are some potential markets for minimally processed onions. So when we say minimally, minimally processed, the discolored or oversized bulb onions are peeled and then sliced and then marketed to uh, some of our um, brought, uh, noodle, noodle packaging products. No? So there are buyers for this minimally processed onion. So meaning to say the, the rejects, which is considered as loss on the uh, value chain that we've considered as fresh uh, onions, it still can be, the losses here can be further reduced and used as raw materials to be processed for other products. Yeah, and at the same time, this can be marketed as additional source of income on the part of the farmers. So we've mentioned earlier, there's a high onion loss from cold storage. We are looking for potential alternative storage technologies using ambient temperature. So another example, we'll just make it fast. The carrots is sold as unwashed and washed. And we found out that unwashed carrots has a lower losses compared to the washed. But for hygienic purposes, we have to uh, sell it washed 
So we found out that this, from the farmer to the wholesaler retail level, we have these losses, and this is due to bruise abrasion, because the uh, during the cleaning process of the carrots, the surface is so soft, that's why it's uh, prone to bruises. So for now, we address these bruises by designing and developing carrot washer, and uh, we are trying to uh, for the mechanized carrot washer to be tested and uh, to be scaled down so that uh, it could be useful for the farmer level. So in summary, it's just um, I, what I just presented to you is just a snapshot of what we are doing at Filmec and the detailed activities for each of these losses and uh, commodity, you can uh, ask the references I've mentioned in the presentation. So in, in order to determine the appropriate post-production technologies and practices, we first need to identify the value or supply chain of that specific commodity. And then identify who are the actors and activities in each of the chain. Let them determine what are the sources of these losses. Quantify these losses so that actions that we can take to reduce these losses can be further uh, recommended. And to maximize the benefits, for example, what I've said to the, uh, the bulb onion, we can use those rejects, those losses, into coming up with other value-adding activities for that, so that the farmers can also have additional income out of those rejects from the uh, value chain I've mentioned. So with that, thank you very much. That's all I have to share for this afternoon.